What's up everyone, it's Brace from Langchain, and in today's video we're going to be talking about all things streaming with Langraph. We're going to cover the four main streaming methods, events, messages, updates, and values. We're then going to jump into some code and see exactly how we can invoke them via the runnable code and log all the outputs to the terminal where we can then inspect exactly what data was outputted and we can talk about why. After that, we're going to open it up in a simple streaming playground chatbot where we can invoke our backend, uh, toggle the different streaming modes and see how that data is rendered on our streaming playground based on the different streaming mode we selected. And then finally, we can talk about some use cases and where you might want to use these different streaming modes. So the first streaming mode to talk about is the events mode. This is our most comprehensive mode, which allows you to stream back every single action which is occurring inside of your graph or your run as it happens in near real time. There are three main types of events which will be yielded during this streaming mode. This is a start, end, and stream event. Every time something happens inside your run, say you invoke a chat model, you will get an on type, so in our case chat model, start event. So if you invoke your chat model, you'll get back an on chat model start. Then we have our streaming type. Every single time something inside of your graph or your run streams, not the actual graph itself, but a specific task inside your graph, like chat model stream streaming back tokens. So every single time that happens, you'll get back an on type stream event. So in our case, that will be an on chat model stream event. And you'll get back a series of those for every single token that's streamed um, from the LLM. And then finally, when it completes, you'll get an on type end event, in our case, an on chat model end event. This will occur for every single action taken inside of your graph, um, including the graph start, the graph end, and so on. Um, and you get the inputs, outputs, and chunks yielded along with some other metadata. So now let's open up the code and inspect exactly how we can do this programmatically. First things first, you're going to want to clone the LangGraphJS examples repository and then open up the streaming messages directory. I've already done that, so I can open it up here. So I have my streaming messages directory open and I'm going to want to set a couple environment variables in my .in file. That's going to be the OpenAI API key and Tavili API key. That's because we have our graph inside of the runnable directory here, which requires an OpenAI key to call the OpenAI API and also a Tavili search results uh, tool, which uses the Tavili um, API to essentially search the web on different queries. We then have a super simple graph that we saw inside of our LangGraph Studio here, which has two nodes, agent and tools, um, and the agent can route to either tools or it can end. So you're going to open up the stream events file here, and we see we're importing our graph. We're defining our message, saying what's the current stock price of Apple. We're setting our config, um, specifically setting the stream events version to v2, which is the latest version. And then we're passing in our input and our config to the graph.streamEvents method. Then we're iterating over the stream and just logging all of the values to the terminal. So now we can open up our terminal and invoke this graph. So I hit enter, and then we're going to see all of the different events yield in. It's going to have a large amount of events because it's yielding in, as we see there, um, an event for every single action that's taking place inside of our graph. So we scroll to the top, and we can see that the very first event that was yielded back to us was the on-chain start. This is the first event taken in our graph because it started. Uh, next, we have a subchain inside there, so it's another on-chain start and then on-chain end, and that's just for the very first um, part of the graph that sets in invoke. Then we start our chat model, so we see an on chat model start event, and this is going to yield a message. So we see the data field, and this data object is going to contain all of the data that this event yielded. So in our case, it's the input to this, this message, um, which contains the messages field, because that's the state uh, that we defined for our graph. And this is just going to contain the message that we inputted. Next, we're going to stream back all the tokens. So for every single time the LLM streams a token, we'll get an event for that. And we can see here contains a chunk. So this data object can, can contain three fields, input, output, and chunk. Uh, the input is the input that's passed to this different task. Um, the output is if something is returned, and a chunk is if something is streamed. So since this is on channel stream, we're going to get a series of chunks. These contain all of the different tool calls. Um, as we can see here, it's, provide, it's passing in data into the tool call chunks, and those will be aggregated into a final tool call at the end of this chat model. So as we can see, we have the on chat model end event, and now our tool calls field is populated with the tool call that then ended this section of the chain, and it started the next section, which is going to call the Tavili 
search results API. We then call the tool. We get the on tool start with the input and then the on tool end with the output that was returned from this, from this node. In this case, it's a tool message containing the result of the tool call. Finally, this is going to get passed back to the LLM where we will get more on chat model stream events containing the chunks with the final result of the LLM, uh, streaming back all those tokens. So that's stream events. Let's now talk about some different use cases where this might be useful. Uh, the very first one, which we've used past at LangChain, is the generative UI use case, where you want to be constantly updating the UI, reflecting exactly what's happening on the server to the user. Uh, stream events is very powerful in this case because you'll get events for when things start, the four different streams that are happening inside of that task, and for when things end. So you could be updating the UI, letting the user know, hey, this task has started. You can update it every time you get a new chunk back from the stream, saying this is exactly what's going on, like rendering the tokens from an LLM call. And then when things end, you'll be able to say, hey, this task is, so they can be informed as to what exactly is happening on the server. Now we can jump into the next stream mode, messages. The stream mode messages will only stream back messages that get updated in the state. So say I have three state fields in my graph and I update one, which is a number. That will not yield back any data because the messages mode will only stream back messages. So I would have to update a field in my state which contains messages for this stream mode to yield back some data. Now we can open up stream messages file. You see it's pretty much the same, except we're not calling stream events. We do not have to specify a version. We just pass in our input. And then since my graph only contains a messages field, we don't need to do anything else and we can just log the events. We can go to our terminal and we can run yarn start messages. We'll hit submit. And then as each message is appended to our state, we'll see it logged to the terminal here. Now this is finished, we scroll to the top and we'll see the very first node which was invoked was the agent node. And that returned a new AI message here containing the tool call. This tool call is calling the TBLE search results tool as we see here. Then we get a new message returned from the tools node, which is a tool message containing the result of the API call. And then finally, we get an AI message containing some text content uh, that was generated using the result of the tool call and our original question. As we can see, since my graph only contains messages, this will only stream back the messages that were updated in my state. We can now open up the web server, which also comes in repository if you clone it, the, inside the streaming messages front end directory. So you're going to want to navigate there and run yarn dev. And then once you've ran that, you can open up your web server here. And once this loads, we can simply ask a question like what's the current stock price of Tesla? And it will stream it back to us using the stream messages mode. So we see we get a tool call. We see the result of the tool call. And then we see that the LLM generated a final response here. Using this settings icon, we can toggle the different stream modes. So if we want to see events, which is what we were just talking about, we can select this. And then we'll just say, thanks. This is going to log every single object which is returned from our stream events call. So if we scroll to the top, we see there's a lot of events because it's going to send back a new event for every single token yielded by the LLM. We see we get our on-chain start. As we scroll, we can start to see our agent node was invoked. We can then see on-chain start again, which is probably going to be calling the tool call. So it's a runnable Lambda, which contains the on chat model start event. And inside here, we can also see that we get all of the history inside our messages. So we see the message that the LLM responded with above. We see the tool call content, and then we also see our input. Or sorry, this is the tool call. If we scroll up, then we can see our input. So this just shows how much data these stream events endpoint will return. As you see, we scroll for quite a while to get to the end because it's returning every single event and all the data from those events that were taken in our graph. Now, if we go back to the code, we can open up our readme and we see that the next mode is updates. The stream mode updates is somewhat more selective to where it will only yield the updates made to the graph and no other fields. So let's say you have once again, three fields in your state and you update one of those fields and you're specifying stream mode updates you're only going to get the value that you updated. You are not going to get any of the other fields in your current state. You're not going to get the previous fields of that current state item. You're just going to get the data that was updated in that specific update. This occurs when you um, do one of two things, return a value inside of a node, and then you're going to get that data which was returned inside that node, or you call the update state method on the graph. 
um, and th then you're going to get the object or whatever data you passed in to that update state method. So it's only going to give you the, the data that was updated and nothing else. Now, if we open up the stream updates file, we can see once again, we're calling dot stream, but this time we're passing stream mode updates and then logging the values. Now we're back in the terminal and we run yarn start update, hit submit. And as we see, only the updates come in. So from the first node tools or agent, then tools, then agent again, as you can see, it's pretty similar to the messages mode because I only have messages in my graph, but we have the node. And then this was the value returned from that node. If we open up the graph, we can see exactly what gets returned from the model. So call model, which is our agent node, returns this messages object containing the message. And as we see that matches up right here exactly, and it's only returning inside this, this one yielded object, the data that was returned from this node. The next is the tools node. The tools node returns messages with a single message. And then once again, the agent node here returning this uh, AI message. So once again, the updates stream mode will only ever return the values updated in that specific point in your graph. So now we can go back to the UI, we can reload, and then we'll want to toggle stream mode updates. And we'll ask a question, what is the current stock price of Tesla? And as we see, we are only getting in the same things we saw in the terminal. We have the agent, the tools, and then the agent node again. And it's only the values that were returned inside of those specific nodes, and we're not getting the rest of the history. If we want to get the values returned and the rest of the history, we can specify stream mode values. First, let's look at the code and see how this works, and then we'll run it in the playground. So we'll open up the streamValues.ts file, and then we see, once again, we're specifying stream mode, but this type is values. We call dot stream, and then we log all of the values of this to the terminal. Now let's open up our terminal, terminal and invoke it. I hit start, and we're going to see all of the updates, including the previous values in our state, get logged to the terminal. So I scroll to the top, and we see the very first object, which is yielded back, is our input message. That is when we updated the graph state with our input, right? We sent it to the server that adds it to the graph state, and then a new value is added to the state so it gets yielded back to us. Next, our LLM called a tool. So we see we get a new messages array containing our message because it's sending back, right, the entire state and the updates. So we get our message and then the new AI message, which was added to the state. Next, it calls the tool. So we see our message, the AI message, and then we see the tool message. And finally, it's calling the LLM to generate a final response. So we see we get the final response right here, which was the, the new update, including the rest of the fields, which were already in the, the state which is the tool message, the original AI message containing the tool call, and then our input. Now, if we go to our streaming UI and we toggle stream mode to be values and ask a question, we'll see the exact same thing we logged in the terminal, but this is a little bit prettier. So we wait for this to load. And then we scroll to the top. We see we have the initial state, which is our question. We then we see the LLM called a tool. So we see our question here, and then the tool call, which the LLM called. After that, we see that the tool node was called, so we see our input message, the tool call by the LLM, and then the result of the tool call. Finally, our LLM is gener generating a final response. So we see we have our message, the tool call that the LLM generated, the result of the tool call, and then the final message that the LLM generated here. So as we see, we have our messages array, which is our, our all, the only field in our state containing the first item, which is the message that we submitted. Then the AI message gets appended, so we get our original message and the new update. Finally, the tool node returns a tool message, so we get this update, including the rest. And then lastly, the AI message generates a text response, so we get that text response, including the rest of the history. So now that you know the four different ways to stream back data from the LangGraph server, let's talk about how and where you might use these. So we already spoke about the events mode in the beginning where I stated that generative UI applications utilize that well because they need so many events to be uh, updating and rendering on the UI. The next was the messages mode, which is very useful if you're building something like this, which is a chatbot where you only care about messages in and messages out and you're not really rendering anything else on the UI except for the human and assistant messages. The next mode is the updates mode. An application where this could be useful is say a notification system where you only care about the changes being made and not the current state or the previous state. You really only need what just changed and then to render that in your notification system. So for that, you might want to use the updates mode. 
And then finally, we have the values mode, which returns the entire state whenever anything changes. Um, an application where this might be useful is say some sort of admin dashboard where you want to always be showing the total state um, and have some sort of snapshot showing what is happening in every field of the state at this time. And you want that to be updating whenever anything changes. So for that, you might want to use the values mode. So those are the four stream modes which LangGraph supports. I hope you all know a lot more about streaming now and how to stream with LangGraph. And I'm excited to see what everyone builds in the future.